So the thing that's tricky about this first question, A, B, and C, is that they have so many different functions, um, and they're naming them all different letters, so you just have to be careful juggling all of that. Um, so let's go through and see what they gave us. This is the graph of F, so that is F of X. And then they gave us g of x is this square root function. I rewrote it because it was small there. And then h of x is this exponential and then minus a trig function here. So that's what they gave us. This is f, which is a graph. And then they gave us g and h as um, actual functions right now. So here's what letter A is saying. This new function k of x is f times g find k prime of zero. Okay, so we're gonna find k of x, or excuse me, k prime of x, and then we're gonna plug in zero. So um, what rule would we need to do this derivative? Will not need chain rule. We have two functions multiplied together. You guys aren't being very chatty this morning. It's making me nervous. I know we had a four day weekend. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. This will be product rule. Um, and actually there will end up being a chain rule at some point in there because look at G of X. G of X has a square root and then stuff inside of it. So actually we are gonna need chain rule as well here. So we're gonna, we're gonna need both. All right, but first product rule. Product rule is the first function. So that would be um, F of X times derivative of the second plus the second function times derivative of the first. So you would get like a point for just writing that out. So just writing out the product rule. Um, and now we're gonna go and evaluate it at zero. So first we've got f of zero. So this is the function f. Can anybody tell me what f of zero is? Just by looking at that graph, uh, what is f of zero gonna give us? And good, that would be three. That's right here, zero, three. So this first part is three. All right, then we have to do g prime of zero. Okay, so we're gonna pause on this for a second, come over here to the side. I'm gonna have to find g prime, and then I'm gonna have to plug in zero to see what goes here. So this is like, okay, hold on, k of x. I'm gonna have to come over here and do this side problem. All right, now for g, we are gonna need chain rule. Square root is the outside, and then all of this stuff underneath here is the inside. So derivative of square root, that is one over two square root. Again, you would do well just to know that one. Um, one over two square root. All the inside stuff is gonna stay the same. And then we're gonna chain on, so I'm gonna put it in the numerator, um, the derivative of this inside stuff, which would be two x minus one. And we're going to plug zero into that. So if we plug in zero, the numerator is going to be negative one. And then down here, we're going to have two square roots. Um, if we plug in zero for all these x's, that would just be three. Um, so that is what goes in these parentheses right here. We were trying to do g prime of zero. So we found g prime. We plugged in zero. And so that is what goes right here. Oh, I forgot the negative then. Negative. All right, plus, now we're gonna do g of zero. So if we plug zero in to g of x, that will give us square root of three. And then last one, we want f prime of zero. Now here's f, the derivative means the slope. So we want the slope of this graph at zero. So here's zero, that means we want the slope of this line. So can anybody tell me the slope of this line? Yeah, good, I'm not sure if anybody else is gonna end. Okay, good. Um, so we're going up two over one, so that slope is two. And remember guys, you don't have to simplify any of this. You're better off not. Um, if you simplify anything and you mess it up, it's gonna be wrong. So, um, so just stop and leave it there. Let me recap. We did a product rule and then we evaluated it at zero and we kind of had to go and gather those values from different places because they gave us all these different things. All right, let's see. M is defined by this thing. Find M prime of five. Okay, so we're gonna find M 
prime, and then we're gonna plug in five. So what rule do we need for this one? And I'll write it a little bit bigger, but what rule do we need for that, guys? Good, that is gonna be quotient, awesome. All right, so quotient rule says we want the denominator, so 2g of x times derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times derivative of the denominator. So that would be 2g prime of x. So denominator, derivative of the numerator minus numerator, derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. And I'm gonna move this down a bit because that took up a lot of space. All right, now we're gonna evaluate that at five. And remember, we don't have to simplify any of this down. So I'm gonna end up just you know, leaving it all alone. So this first part, we're gonna do g of five and then multiply it by two. So let's come back over here to g of x. We're gonna plug in five to this. So that would give us 25 minus five would be 20 plus three would be 23. Okay, so that would be square root of 23 and we're timesing it by two. So two square root 23 for that first part. All right, the next part would be f prime and we wanna evaluate this at five. So f prime of five. So let me come up here to f. This is the graph of f. Here is five. The derivative would be the slope at that point. So we want the slope of this line which looks like it is going down two over three. So negative two thirds for the slope of that line. So negative two thirds minus, all right, now we want f of five. That would just be the point on the graph at five, just f of five. Um, so f of five is five. And then lastly, we want two times g prime of five. Well, we already found g prime back in part A. Let's just plug five into this. Um, and then we're gonna times it by a two. So it's gonna be two times um, whatever we get here. So plugging in five, uh, the numerator then would be nine. And then the denominator, if we plug in five, um, what did we say? That was 25 minus 5 is 20 plus 3. So that'll be 2 square root of 23. I did not leave enough room to write a 2 square root of 23 here, but 2 square root of 23. And then this is all over 2 times g of x squared. So 2 times g of 5 um, squared. So what did we say g of 5 was? I feel like we did that one already. Um, if we plug in five, we're gonna get square root of 23. And again, you don't have to simplify any of this down. Thank goodness, just leave it all alone. So we found the derivative and then we evaluated it at five um, using all those functions they gave us. And then we just, uh, just walked away, just leave it alone. All right, and then C says, find the value of X between negative one and two um, such that f prime of x equals h prime of x. All right, so let's find f prime um, on that interval. And it's from negative one to two. So looking at the graph of f, negative one to two is this section. Again, the derivative means the slope. And so the slope of that line we said was two. It's going up two over one. So the derivative of f for that uh, section is two. And then we're gonna find h prime and then we'll set them equal. We wanna find where f prime equals h prime. So f prime is two, we're gonna find h prime and then set those two things equal. We haven't used function h let, yet. Let's go back up and see. Here's h of x. So derivative of five e to the x would be five e to the x, that's itself, minus, and then derivative of sine is cosine. So that would be nine cosine of x. So again, we did h prime, we got that. f prime was just the slope, which was two, and we're gonna set those two things equal. It said we want f prime to equal h prime. 
Now, this you cannot solve by hand. This you would need a calculator for. So this would have to be a calculator allowed question. Um, what we're going to do is put this into Y1 and this into Y2, and we'll find the intersection. So if you have a calculator, you can follow along. Um, if not, just watch me. Uh, you are going to need a calculator at some point. Um, or Desmos, you're going to have to have access to that at some point. All right, so going to y equals, we're going to have 5 uh, e to the x minus 9 cosine x. And then in y2, I'm just going to put the number 2. So that's going to be a constant function. That's just going to go flat line at 2. Um, and then we want our window to be what they gave us, so negative 1 to 2. So I'm going to go to the window. I'm going to make this be negative 1 to 2. And oh gosh, I don't know what I was doing before, but I don't want this to go all the way up to 80. Um, let me make this maybe like negative 5 to 5. And we'll, we'll hit graph and see, see what this looks like. All right, and then there should be, yeah, there it goes, a flat line at 2. And so our answer is this intersection. I just need to make my calculator give that to me. Um, it's going to be in your calculate menu, which is right here. So second trace. And I'm going to choose intersection. And it's going to ask me first curve, second curve, guess. Um, for first curve and second curve, you can just hit enter, first curve, enter, second curve, enter. For guess, you just move the cursor close to the intersection. In this case, it, it doesn't really matter. There only is one intersection. Uh, but just hit enter again and it will come up. And so here is our answer. And remember, you need three decimal points. If you forget, just write them all, because um, you can always do more than enough, but you need at least three. So this would be 0.622.